This is the mission which Pope Francis gave us when he confirmed the universal apostolic preferences. These were the fruit of a spirit-led discernment by the universal apostolic body. Illuminated by them, we put into practice the mission of reconciliation and justice to which the 36th General Congregation invites us. The crisis is showing us that we are one humanity. Every human being, every people, each culture is part of this one varied, rich and interdependent humanity. It is showing us that there is no difference in age, race, religion or social status when we are one humanity. Starting by putting what we are ourselves one in a second place and accepting the measures and sacrifices that allow us to contribute to the good of all. God is a, a tricky word because of how, which, what, which God are we talking about? Oh, I have several gods in, the, in, our, in our world. So if we are talking about the God of Jesus Christ or the God that Jesus Christ revealed us, so we have to see Jesus Christ. And how is the, the, the most... Uh, uh, profound and uh, deep uh, image of God that Jesus gives us, the cross. Jesus in cross. Jesus given uh, his life for the life of us. There is God. If we are able to really contemplate and get touched by the contemplation of Jesus in cross, we will find the crucified people today. The crucified of this uh, moment of the pandemic and the injustice of the world. And we will find God. God is there. God is asking us uh, to do something, to give our life so that people can have life. We have suggestions to help us turn this crisis into permanent, not temporary and reactionary changes. Really don't forget that this is not uh, also an accident. It's not an accident in the COVID-19. It's the fruit of a, a way of how human beings has uh, understand and have made their own relationship. And it's a confirmation of our mission to collaborate, to contribute in the change of this world. And I think uh, we can show the people through reflecting about the COVID-19, the fragility of the world we have created you know, and, and how we need really to get together so we can go in another way. I don't think so that after the crisis, uh, things are going to change like this. You know? There are so many interests behind this and so many we are so uh, used to the West. We, we are dreaming to come back to our normality. You know? we, we are dreaming to, to just live as we were before uh, the, the virus uh, came to our life. But that's, that's the, the great temptation. So to take an opportunity of this crisis is to be aware that uh, something can, has to change because really we are in a in a very fragile structure of human uh, relationship and life. So don't forget this crisis. No, yes, okay, that was a, a bad night, a nightmare. No, and we are awake again and we are again in our life as before. No, no, we have to take the, the, the lesson that if we don't change after this, the next one will be. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me today. For this presentation, we will be discussing Dr. Anthony Fauci, 
from the President's Coronavirus Task Force and some very interesting background regarding the very secretive Order of the Jesuits. And this might explain a little bit about his actions over the last few weeks. At a White House press briefing to address the coronavirus, when Donald Trump answered a reporter's question by saying, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like him to go back to the State Department, or as they call it, the Deep State Department. Dr. Fauci immediately, unnecessarily, does a face palm, as if he can't control himself, ladies and gentlemen. This couldn't be further from the truth, as I suspect that this man has total control of his emotions, probably much more than any of us. And I'll explain why in a bit. When the president spoke in a very promising way on the uh, hydrochloric cure possibility, America's favorite doctor then contradicted the president when the doctor was asked if this is a cure by saying the answer is no, because the evidence you're talking about is anecdotal. Now, anecdotal is defined as based on casual observance, observations or indications rather than rigorous or scientific analysis pertaining to or consisting of anecdotes. A simple we will see or time will tell would have sufficed. This comment seems a bit overkill by the doctor. This man, Dr. Fauci, is highly, highly intelligent. He must understand how that statement would be ran with the press, does he not? Here's some credentials. Anthony Stephen Fauci, born December 24, 1940, is an American immunologist who serves as director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and as a member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force addressing the 2019-20 coronavirus pandemic. As a physician with the National Institutes of Health of the United States, he has served public health in various capacities for over 50 years. He has made contributions to HIV, AIDS research, and other immunodeficiencies, both as a scientist and as the head of the NAIAD at the NIH. The RAG New York Times called Fauci the nation's leading expert on infectious diseases. Fauci was born in Brooklyn, New York to Stephen A. Fauci and Eugenia A. Fauci, owners of a pharmacy, where his father worked as the pharmacist. His mother and sister worked the register and Fauci delivered prescriptions. Fauci's paternal grandparents, Antonio Fauci and Caligero Guardino, were from Shaka, Italy. His maternal grandmother, Raffaella Trematera from Naples, Italy, was a seamstress. And his maternal grandfather, Giovanni Abis, was born in Switzerland and was an artist, noted for his landscape and portrait painting and magazine illustrations, as well as graphic design for commercial labels, including olive oil cans. His great-grandparents emigrated to the USA in the late 19th century, and Fauci grew up, obviously, Roman Catholic. Fauci attended Regis High School in New York City, where he graduated in 1958. He then enrolled at the College of the Holy Cross, where he received a bachelor's in classics in 1962. Fauci then went on to attend Cornell University Medical College, where he graduated first in his class with an MD in 1966. He then completed an internship and residency at the New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center. But he can't control his emotions and makes faces and gestures in the middle of a national press conference like an adolescent, right? Regis High School is a private Jesuit University Preparatory School for Roman Catholic Young Men located on Manhattan's Upper East Side. Annual class enrollment is limited to approximately 135 male students from the New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut tri-state area. So very exclusive. 
not just anyone can enroll. The school is ranked as both the best Catholic high school in the United States and the best all-boys school in New York. Regis is also consistently ranked in the top five high schools in the nation in regard to SAT and ACT scores. St. Regis High School was founded in 1914 through the financial bequest of a single formerly anonymous benefactress, Julia M. Grant, the widow of Mayor Hugh J. Grant. She stipulated that her gift be used to build a Jesuit high school providing a free education for Catholic boys with special consideration given to those who could not otherwise afford a Catholic education. The school continues that policy and does not charge tuition today. The Grant's former home is the residence of the Vatican Observer to the United Nations. This is where the Pope stays when he visits New York City. Now, if anyone out there is familiar with the Order of the Jesuits, you are making some serious connections here. We'll touch upon some of the basics of the Jesuits' methods of operation and some of their rituals. However, we cannot go too far as we will be covering the Jesuits much more extensively in another presentation devoted entirely to this sun-worshipping cult. The Jesuits are possibly the most secretive, well-organized, disciplined, intellectual mystery school order of them all. In another presentation, I can take you from the 1500s and its founding by Spaniard Ignatius Loyola to the takeover of the Vatican to the alliance with the Red Shield or the Rothschilds to the war for independence to the Civil War all the way to modern times. They've played a role in all of this and it's done usually by controlling both sides of a conflict or issue. They are and always will be masters of infiltration and subversion. Their main goal, like that with most of the mystery schools, is to destabilize every government or institution and then to swoop in with a solution their solution usually consisting of them fixing the problem but while leaving them in a new position of power over those whom have just experienced this problem or issue Hegelian dialectic problem reaction solution and when as this presentation is being created we are getting ready to approve a two trillion dollar loan from the criminal Federal Reserve in order to fix the SARS COVID-2 problem. It makes one wonder, doesn't it? This is how they operate, folks. And don't forget this fact, please. Admission to St. Regis is no joke. A prospective student is any 8th grader, baptized Roman Catholic male who has demonstrated superior academic ability and first completes an application that includes the composition of multiple short essays and then sits for Regis's own admission test. Of the approximately 1,000 students who sit for this test each year, about 230 are selected for two interviews with one faculty member and one alumni, and around 135 students are admitted. And that's today. I su suspect it was much, much less back when the good doctor attended. There are also various publications that students can work on, such as the newspaper called The Owl, <laughs> or their yearbook called The Region, as well as several literary publications, such as their sports magazine called The Falcon, a journal of opinion called The Crow, and a movie review magazine called Flix Picks and a literary magazine called The Raven. Now, the owl, dear listeners, is a very important symbol to them. An owl can see in the dark. Occultists like to use the owl as one of their symbols because they can see things that the average person from the public cannot, or the profane, as they call us. 
occult members are enlightened to the dark inner workings of the secret society. Think Bilderberg. They worship that owl and do mock sacrifices to it. The falcon, well, to them it symbolizes the story of the phoenix. In ancient Greek folklore, a phoenix is a long-lived bird that cyclically regenerates or is otherwise born again. And there's that rebirth again, if you've been following this channel. It further states that it's associated with the sun. A phoenix obtains new life by arising from the ashes of its predecessor. Some legends say it dies in a show of flames and combustion. Others that it simply dies and decomposes before being born again. This is mostly just a retelling of the dramas of Isis and Osiris. Please watch the videos on the mystery schools from this channel to see what it is that we are speaking about here. It's very important. Herodotus, Lucan, Pliny the Elder, Pope Clement, and Isidore of Seville are among those who have contributed to the retelling and transmission of the phoenix motif. The phoenix symbolized renewal in general, as well as entities and concepts such as the sun, time, the Roman Empire, Christ, Mary, and virginity. This bird is likely a falcon, and you will see that in another presentation on this channel. The editorial paper and an image uh, on the school logo takes the name of the crow. And again, ladies and gentlemen, this is yet another symbol for their devotion to the occult. And we will explain this in another presentation also. The sister school for St. Regis, the Covenant of the Sacred Heart in Manhattan would do joint plays and productions. One of these productions consisted of alumnus Lady Gaga who attended the all-girls school, Jesuit Sacred Heart. She performed a musical at St. Regis. They're all in the family, dear listeners. Dr. Fauci then attended the College of the Holy Cross where he received a bachelor's in classics in 1962. Now what is a classics degree? Classics or classical studies is the study of classical antiquity. It encompasses the study of the Greco-Roman world, particularly of its languages and literature, like ancient Greek and classical Latin, but also of Greco-Roman philosophy, history, and archaeology. Traditionally in the West, the study of the Greek and Roman classics is considered one of the cornerstones of the humanities and a fundamental element of a rounded education. The study of classics has therefore traditionally been a cornerstone of a typical elite education. Ladies and gentlemen, this definition of a classics degree could also simply be referred to as the study of the mystery schools, as this covers many of the most well-known initiates like Homer, Plato, Pythagoras, etc. I'd also like to point out that this is a very peculiar degree to go into if one is going into medicine, of which the good doctor was indeed doing, unless of course one was studying the history of his forefathers to better understand the exo and esoteric meanings of the great abstract truths of this world, preparing him for his future service to the order. Holy Cross is a private Jesuit liberal arts college in Worcester, Massachusetts, founded in 1843. Holy Cross is the oldest Catholic college in New England and one of the oldest in the United States. Opened as a school for boys under the auspicious of the Society of Jesus, it was the first Jesuit college in New England. Holy Cross has traditionally drawn many of its students from a pool of historical Catholic high schools and private boarding schools, though a majority of current undergraduates come from public schools. I'd like to point out the seal of the Holy Cross seen here and this next picture 
and you'll recall this if you've watched some of the Mystery Babylon series from this channel. A symbol of the Order of the Rose and Cross, one of the Jesuits' immediate predecessors, many say, which is really just the symbol of the Zodiac Cross. And of course, what would a mystery school cult be if they didn't have their Zodiac and their Sun or their Satan? The school color is purple. According to Wikipedia, there are two theories of how Holy Cross chose purple as its official color. One suggests it was derived from royal purple used by Constantine the Great as displayed on his military standard and on those of later Christian emperors of Rome. And again, if you've been watching this channel, you'll know that Constantine was the one who morphed the sun-worshipping Roman Empire into the Catholic Church. And that sun worship is still practiced in many Catholic churches today, ladies and gentlemen, whether the priest and the parishioners even know it or not. And most don't. Written in the book is the college's motto, In hoc signo vincis, which translates as, By this sign thou shalt conquer. The phrase is credited to our favorite Roman Emperor Constantine. And these signs are still seen all over today. A few graduates from here that some of you may know are Chris Matthews, who recently retired from MSNBC, like all those CEOs who keep retiring every other day. Several alumni have held top positions in the world of business and finance. Bob Wright, chairman and CEO of NBC Universal. He was also vice chairman of General Electric. James David Power III, that's J.D. Power and Associates founder. Uh, William J. McDonough, president of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and vice chairman of Merrill Lynch. Ever heard of Dick Cusack? Well, maybe you've heard of his children. Actors John Cusack, Joan Cusack, or Ann Cusack. Wow, what are the odds? One man having three kids that all break into Hollywood and become successful actors. Yes, they're hidden everywhere, folks. You just have to open your eyes and look. Dr. Fauci took a job at the National Institute of Health directly after school, a place he still works today. He met his wife there, Christine Grady. She's an American nurse and bioethicist who as of 2020 serves as the head of the Department of Bioethics at the National Institutes of Health Clinical Center. Bioethics is the study of the ethical issues emerging from advances in biology and medicine. It is also moral discernment as it relates to medical policy and practice. Bioethics are concerned with the ethical questions that arise in the relationships among life sciences, biotechnology, medicine, and medical ethics, politics, law, theology, and philosophy. She has her BS and her PhD from Georgetown U, another Jesuit college. And she's a social justice warrior which probably isn't good when you're in charge of ethics. In a March 24th article from Heavy.com, she is quoted as saying, quote, she was inspired to pursue nursing as a career by her parents, who instilled it in her a sense of civic responsibility. Grady told the NIH in 1997 that when we were children, I can remember at young ages going on civil rights marches and things like that because my parents took us there. We did not know what they were really about because at the time, although I was older than some of my brothers and sisters, I was not that old. So some of the things did not register directly then, but I think they had an impact later on. So I have always been interested Again, there was my parents' influence in social issues. Figures, because here is doctor with Hillary Clinton, and I think that's his wife in the front left with the white coat at some function. 
Dr. Fauci has won a few Cabal Awards, like the 2013 Robert Koch Gold Medal, the Arthur S. Fleming Award in 1979, and George W. Bush awarded him the National Medal of Science and a Presidential Medal of Freedom Award in 2008. According to the Holy Cross magazine, in their summer of 2002 edition, they interviewed America's favorite doctor, and they had this to say about his attending St. Regis High, quote, the distance he had to travel to get there is difficult to explain for reasons of time or geography and also for reasons of culture. The, the trip took 75 to 80 minutes each way. A bus and three subways during rush hour in both directions. <laughs> By rough calculation, all the time he spent commuting during his four years at Regis, it cost him more than 70 days. That's a long ways to travel to school, folks. Fauci often credits part of his professional success to the inculcation of Jesuit intellectual rigor that was a core part of his education. An emphasis on organization and logic, on succinctness and clarity of expression. And we spoke about this a little earlier. The Jesuits are very intellectual and meticulous in their duties. If Dr. Fauci is an agent of the Jesuits sent into the U.S. medical apparatus to do the greater work, then he would have been young when they would have began watching him. Since many Jesuits control many high schools and universities throughout the country and world, then they could, according to a manuscript, found in the library of the Rue Rijalu at Paris, entitled History of the Jesuits in 1709, says that they mold the youthful mind according to their secret aims. If then, after a number of years, they detected in the pupil a blind and fanatic faith, they proceeded to initiate him. There are many levels of degrees for the Jesuits, just like all of the sun-worshipping cults. The Jesuits are closely related to the Rosicrucians, the Gnostics, and the Skull and Bones. We know three famous Skull and Bonesmen, don't we? George Bush Jr., George Herbert Walker Bush, and John Kerry. These three mystery school orders have all been rumored to use actual body parts like bones or skulls or other parts of special people or saints as relics and used during their rituals. If the good doctor is an agent of the order, he would be a perfect fit, highly intelligent, obviously highly motivated and highly disciplined, and look at him, highly inconspicuous and then having made entry into an important American institution, just like the unelected deep state does so well. Right out of college, I'd like to point out. And he is able to then immediately begin to promote up to the director position he holds today. He finished number one in his medical school at Cornell U where he got his doctorate. He was so motivated and so disciplined that he drove the subway one way for an hour and a half and then an hour and a half back home, five days a week. If he is doing the greater work of the order and is a high-ranking member, then according to a book by researcher Carlos Didier, the doctor would have been called to the chapel of the covenant of the order where there are only three others present the principal or superior standing in front of the altar and on either side would stand a monk one of whom holds a banner of yellow and white which are the papal colors and the superior then says to the candidate my son heretofore you have been taught to act the dissembler which is defined as to disguise or conceal behind a false appearance among Roman Catholics to be a Roman Catholic 
and to be a spy even among your own brethren. To believe no man, to trust no man, and obtaining their confidence that you might be enabled to gather together all information for the benefit of your order as a faithful soldier of the Pope. You have been taught to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred between communities, provinces, states that were at peace, and incite them to deeds of blood involving them in war with each other and to create revolutions and civil wars in countries that were independent and prosperous. Cultivating the arts and the sciences and enjoying the blessings of peace. To take sides with the combatants and to act secretly with your brother Jesuit who might be engaged on the other side but openly opposed to that with which you might be connected. Only that the order might be the gainer in the end in the conditions fixed in the treaties for peace and that the ends justify the means. And you've heard that saying if you've been following this channel. You have been taught your duty as a spy to gather all statistics, facts, and information in your power from every source. To ingratiate yourself into the confidence of the family circle of every class and character as well as that of the merchant, the banker, the lawyer, among the schools and universities, in parliaments and legislatures, and the judiciaries and councils of state. And the good doctor would have recited the following. Listen close. That I may go to any part of the world, whither so far I may be sent, to the frozen regions of the north, the burning sands of the deserts of Africa, or the jungles of India, to the centers of civilizations of Europe, or to the wild haunts of the barbarous savages of America, without murmuring or repining, and will be submissive in all things whatsoever communicated to me. I further promise and declare that I will, when opportunity present, make and wage relentless war secretly or openly against all heretics as I am directed to do to exterminate them from the face of the whole earth and that I will spare neither age sex or condition and that I will hang waste boil flay strangle and barely bury alive these infamous heretics rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women and crush their infants' heads against the walls in order to annihilate forever their excrapable race. That when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poison cup, the strangulating cord, the steel of the poniard, or the leaden bullet, regardless of the honor, rank, dignity, or authority of the person or persons, whatever may be their condition in life either public or private as I at any time may be directed so to do by any agent of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith of the Society of Jesus all deserve the Academy Award Oscar for the best performance of innocency and piety and also for makeup and wardrobe design making her outward appearance that of Snow White. Underneath her Snow White outfit, there are running, festering sores and ringworm. On the outside, she smiles sweetly and says, I love you, brother. But behind her bony back, she hides hands that drip with the blood of martyrs. The Vatican is posing as Snow White, but the Bible says that she's a prostitute, the great whore. A cult, Revelation 19.2. She uses government agency branches in every country, including the United States, as her vicious little dwarfs. The more power and control she gets in government, the more she will fade into the background in her snow white disguise, so that government will be used and blamed for all her evil deeds.
reason to enforce laws that harass, malign, destroy, and censor everyone and every idea that is not Roman Catholic, so she can sit as the satanic queen, the big whore. Because of her age-old desire to control the world government and church, the serpent-like Vatican has infested the world and the U.S. government with so many of her zealous, highly trained, and dedicated Jesuit devotees that she now controls the United Nations, which she created. The White House, Congress, every state, federal, civic, and social government agency, including the U.S. Department of Labor, the IRS, the FBI, the Supreme Court, judicial systems, the armed forces, state, federal, and other police, also the international banking and federal reserve systems, called the Illuminati and Agentur, labor unions, the mafia, and most of the heavyweight news media. This cult, the Vatican, is very close to replacing our U.S. Constitution with her one-world satanic canon laws of death to the heretic, anyone who is not Roman Catholic. General Lafayette, President George Washington's most respected aide and general, prophetically stated, If the liberties of the American people are ever destroyed, they will fall by the hand of the Roman Catholic cult's clergy. Today we see the climax of detailed plans given in excerpts from a speech given nearly 50 years ago in Australia by Roman Catholic Archbishop Gilroy. The Roman Catholic motto is ourselves alone for our fellow Roman Catholics. We must defeat all heretics, non-Roman Catholics, at the ballot box. The Holy Father states that negative tactics are fatal. The demands of the Holy Father, the Pope, are that the public services should be 100% Roman Catholic soon. Care must be taken that no suspicion may be raised when Roman Catholics are secretly given more government jobs than Protestants, Jews, and other heretics. Multi-millions of people have been slaughtered by the Vatican, thus saith the Lord. Revelation 18.24 History bears record to this fact. During the Roman Catholic Inquisition in Europe, 68 million people were tortured, maimed, and murdered by this huge sect. The St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre accounted for the butchering of as many as 100,000 Protestants. Abraham Lincoln blamed the papacy for the Civil War in these words. This war would never have been possible without the sinister and secretive influence of the Jesuits. We owe it to Popery that we now see our land reddened with the blood of her noblest sons. Lincoln added, I am for liberty of conscience in its noblest, broadest, and highest sense, but I cannot give liberty of conscience to the Pope and to his followers, the Papists, so long as they tell me through their councils, theologians, and canon laws that their conscience orders them to burn my wife, strangle my children, and cut my throat when they find their opportunity. Because of Abraham Lincoln's many exposés of the Vatican, he was put to death, just as he foretold. Yes, assassinated by the Jesuits under Rome's instructions. The Vatican hasn't changed since Mr. Lincoln's time. JFK's Fatal Mistake When John F. Kennedy was asked by the Vatican 
Are you going to go along with the Roman canon law or the U.S. Constitution? Mr. Kennedy answered them by saying, the U.S. Constitution. This was President Kennedy's fatal mistake. His assassination was ordered by Rome, then planned and carried out by Jesuits, just as President Lincoln's was. Anyone who knew too much about Mr. Kennedy's assassination was taken care of, too. World War II, with its casualties of over 30 million deaths, 6 million Jews, the Holocaust, was conjured up and sponsored by the Vatican. Hitler, Mussolini, and Franco were all members of this sect, the Roman Catholic cult. To win the world not for Christ, but for the Vatican, the Antichrist. The turmoil in Central and South America, the tyranny under Jesuit-trained Castro in Cuba and throughout the Caribbean, and the terrorism in Lebanon and Ireland today are the Vatican's handiwork. Now can you see why God calls the Roman Catholic cult the mother of every abomination on earth? Revelation 17.5 Jim Jones, a Roman Catholic Jesuit deacon, posing as a Christian, was sacrificed, not with poison Kool-Aid, murdered along with his flock by the Vatican to make the world look narrowly and suspiciously upon innocent Christian retreats. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Proverbs 6, 16-19 all these things that God hates, the devilish Vatican is. Did you ever notice that with the Vatican-controlled U.S. customs and immigration, we cannot get out of this country without going through the third degree, searches, radar, etc.? But in the 1960s, when Jesuit Vatican-trained Timothy Leary led our nation's youth into drug addiction, Immigration and customs seemed unable then, as they do now, to detect tens of thousands of pounds of narcotics and drugs entering into our once fair nation via the Mafia, which launders all of its illicit, ill-gotten gain, all its black market money, through the Vatican. Maybe this is why President Abraham Lincoln said, I see a very dark cloud on America's horizon. And that dark cloud is coming from Rome. At the One World Church Convention in Vancouver, some of our volunteers were shocked by the pro-homosexual booths and literature, pro-witchcraft booths and literature, drunkenness and total ungodliness which this universal world's largest cult and sect exalts. These satanic people call anyone that preaches the true word, which is separation from evil, consecration unto good, they call this a cult or a sect, but they worship this one world organization and its cult leader, the Pope who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, or a soon-to-come Pope, as God, will soon sit in the temple of God in Jerusalem, showing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians 2.4 Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 10. They kneel and kiss his ring and feet 
and call him Holy Father, which is forbidden in the Bible. They obey his every wish by calling us a cult who walk in the Spirit and obey God's every wish. They have possibly committed the unpardonable sin, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is never forgiven in this world nor in the world to come. Matthew 12, 31-32 But Satan does not care because he already has blasphemed the Holy Spirit. There are many beautiful people in the Roman Catholic cult who are not wealthy. Some are even very poor and who are not seeking for high position. Most are very humble. These common people are completely unaware of the wickedness that has been and is being committed by the Roman cult, which they have been told is a church. Because God knows their sincere hearts, he is the God of our heart. He says unto these ignorant people, Come out of her, my people. Revelation 18.4 So let's pray they will, soon. A grim reminder to the satanic superboss, the Pope, who runs the Roman house of prostitution and the governments that give her power. Your reign is very short-lived, thus saith the Lord. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, Revelation 18.17 And her smoke rose up for ever and ever. Revelation 19.3 And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Revelation 16.13 The Jewish priesthood ended at Calvary. Nowhere in the Bible has God ever given authority of priesthood to Italians, Poles, or any other race of people other than the Jews. And out of the twelve Jewish tribes, only from the tribe of Levi did God bring forth priests. This shows that the Vatican is unscriptural and living in a world of fantasy and make-believe. When Jesus said, It is finished, Jesus became the only high priest, John 19.30. The Vatican wants to move from Rome to Jerusalem. On September 26, 1973, the Houston Chronicle reported that the politically power-hungry Henry Kissinger helped this super cult, the Vatican, by proposing that Jerusalem become an international city with the control of holy places and the religious administration being given to the Pope. Republicans reject science and reject governance. If you don't believe in science, and you don't believe in governance, that's their approach, and we do not. We don't want any more government that we need, but we know that governance has a role, and we know that science has a role, and without science in our decision-making, uh, we are not going to be on a very successful path. The president came before his staunchest supporters and declared victory. It's a celebration because we have something that just worked out. A celebration, perhaps, but also an airing of grievances. We were treated unbelievably unfairly. And you have to understand, uh, we first went through Russia, Russia, Russia. It was all... The president lavished praise on the Republicans who stood with him. And Mitch McConnell, I want to tell you, you did a fantastic job. And he derided the lone Republican senator who voted to convict him, Utah's Mitt Romney, saying this to Utah's other senator who was in the audience. And say hello to the people of Utah and tell them, I'm sorry about Mitt Romney. I'm sorry. Okay? Romney has declared the president guilty of a, quote, appalling abuse of public trust, choking up when he said that his faith informed his decision. My faith is at the heart of who I am. The president mocked Romney's explanation. You have some that used religion 
as a crutch. They never used it before. So things can happen when you fail so badly running for president. Children who were born in the United States of people who are here undocumented. They are American citizens. The government is threatening to take their parents away from them and send it back to the country they, they lived in. These are okay, children go, with, who are American citizens. You didn't answer a single question I asked, Father, but then again, you're, you're a Jesuit. You can get away with that. <laughs>